okay welcome back guys now we're gonna write functions in R that's the session 2 of this session so the functions are nothing but how you write macros in R to perform the same task over and over again but just passing some variables to be changed in it so so let's get an R and start doing this okay now you remember the bivariate function that we have had written what I'm going to do is convert this bivariate function into a macro function. So this is what I tell every time I teach macros or functions to anybody. Make sure you write the normal normal command first. Don't think about writing any macro or any function. And then wherever you are passing a parameter, make sure you append, you know, you change that parameter specifically and that becomes your simple macro. So let's look at that first statement that we have written is we have created a temporary data temp data and the parameter that we have passed here is age is here and age is here this age is just an alliance name it's it's actually not a parameter we can change it to any anything you know x axis y axis we can call it anything but this is here where you know we have to tell r that read the age field or say gender dummy field or any other field in the data set and compute the aggregated basis that cap losses will be the same because uh, we are gonna we are doing bivariates and the dependent variable will be the same for all the plots that we do therefore cap losses is constant in all the you know macros that will run only this has to change in the first command so let's concentrate on that first okay now to be able to write any function in R first you have to write the name of the function okay one most important thing that you have to remember while you know working in R R is a case sensitive language so if I have written B capital and V capital you have to continue to do that if I instead you know write somewhere else as by where will not read the same thing as what is written here so I have to change it to B being capital and V being capital R is a case sensitive language make sure you take care of that whenever you write your code okay now by where is you know first B capital and whatever you want to write you want to write it anything else you want to write your name as the name of this function you can write that whatever it is this is nothing but the name of the function that we are going to write then again our very own sign pointing towards the left you know less than and dash sign this tells R that whatever is written after this is nothing but the function that it needs to record because there is a function the you know the function function is what we are calling so we write function and then within that we write in the brackets var now var is nothing but the parameter that we are passing into the you know function so wherever was age that will get replaced by var here if you want to pass more than one you know variable you can separate that by comma and say var2 or, or anything else you know these nomenclatures can be anything instead of var you can have written a here and b here all the same thing b here c here and so on and so forth but since we are using only one variable i'll stick with var and then the curly braces now after the curly braces is where your code for you know the macro functions actually starts okay now let's try to understand what the code that we have actually written for the macro function of by var there is one you know, one additional line of code that we have written here uh, that is to get a new data set new data set name that I've given is uh, ND uh, short for new data this code that I've written here is because I want to create a data set that I can use within the macro for further processing now referring to each field name within the macro is slightly tricky that's the reason why I've uh, you know written that code just bear with me on this and whenever you're writing a code and you try to refer to the data please use this code I'll uh, you know in couple of minutes you'll understand why I have done that okay so the first thing that we write within the code is nd new data and then you know your less than and dash sign so that you tell our what to put in that new data statement is data dot frame so I'm cutting a frame of a data set out of my main you know primary data that I have first is the field name that I'm gonna call temp bad this would be the variable name age or any other variable name within the data set so temp var equal to the a17 data so our main data file and then followed by please notice this uh, notation followed within the square packets after a comma 
write the field you know the parameter with of the macro that we are passing this var comes over here now when we pass age here this thing would read as a17 data dollar age this this is how r would read in the back of it when you pass var equal to age or something like that okay so followed by that comma then the second field in the data frame that we are putting is a dependent variable cap losses so we are going to be calling that the same thing so cap losses is equal to a17 data dollar cap loss so this is straight away so what this command would do is you know this would cut out the age and the cap losses both of them together and make a new data set what i what i'll do is i'll quickly show you what the thing would look like so in the console data let me just call it new and write the statement once data dot frame say anything temp t whatever this is equal to a17 data dollar age comma cap losses let's just call it c a17 data dollar cap losses okay let's run this now let's just say you know head new so as you see when i do head new i get two columns named t and c t is nothing but our age and c is nothing but our cap losses so this is what you know this command would do would cull out and cut out the whole of these two fields and put it into a new data set that's all this is doing so in our overall a17 data which had about 10 to 15 fields that would get cut to two fields that's what the statement is doing followed by that then we come back to the original statement that we had written here the temp data statement and the uh, you know make a temp data using the aggregate function same thing we are doing here i'm just calling it as a temp plot data this is the data that we'll use to plot it aggregate now the data set that we have to refer to is the new data set that we have created here nd nd dollar cap losses comma list list and here we have to use the age variable which would be the temp bar here so the same for you know the formula that we have used here instead of age and this age that gets changed with that temp var here this age or var new anything you can put here there's just the name of the list and mean so this would again create the same you know group by aggregate statement for each of the age value it's gonna give the mean value of the cap losses again i do the same thing attach temp plot data and then plot these two use the plot function to make the plot uh, var new which has been created here comes on the x-axis this goes on the y-axis and then I detach the data and that with the curly braces again so this is how as simple as it is to create by var macro okay now let's run this macro so to run this macro let's just copy it and paste it in the control console window and hit enter you would see some pluses coming plus is nothing but the continuation of the statement is what it says so since it's all one statement you know written using enter and spaces and otherwise that's why this is all plus as a continuation uh, r reads it as now in a background by var has been stored as a you know as a macro function now if i just type by var it returns me back what the function it has written with him what I have to do is I have to give by var a variable name to compute the value. So let's give it age first, the plot that we have already seen. So when I give it age, it replaces the whole, all of these variables with the name age and plots the same chart that we have just seen. Now this is the quick, you know, that's the benefit of functions and macros is the quick way to compute all the plots here so what i'm going to do is i have copied and written it down for all the independent variables i'm going to paste it here and just hit enter in one go and i'll get all the plots so all the plots are plotted so okay so what's the problem with one problem with the code is uh, when i plot all the plots the previous plots actually go away just see Yes, so all my previous, so I have to do one by one again, but I don't have to write the whole code again. So gender dummy, I can copy paste and write gender dummy and I get to know that within gender dummy, when the gender is one, which we coded for male, the losses are higher and when gender is zero, which we coded for females, the losses are lower. 
so is for anything else let's just check fuel dummy also so fuel dummy 1 was i think petrol where the losses are lower and fuel dummy 0 where say it's 700 losses are higher so this is how you write a macro function in r and that can help you compute the bivariates for all the variables in a very quick way okay guys so that's the end of this uh, section on bivariates plots and macros next section we would run correlation and regression the final section of the course where we would actually use the lm function to run the regression equation